we welcome you today to our second annual scholarship luncheon. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit about J.B. Mayfield. He buried at Clarion, Texas. J.B. joined up with the uh, first Mississippi. 1862, he wrote a letter home. Folks, I'm sorry. My dear brother's died. One day we'll all meet in that happy land where maybe there'll never be no more wars. About to present the 1862 bathing suit featured in Godless Magazine. <laughs> This lovely outfit is made of yellow flannel. During the Civil War, or the war between the states as we call it, with their men gone to battle, women ran the family farm. They knitted socks, rolled bandages, and helped at hospitals. Some aided the military effort as spies and gun runners. And a few, disguised as men, even served as soldiers. She's going to demonstrate to all of us the Victorian fan language. Sir, I desire your proper acquaintance. Now she's going to show us how to transform a house dress into a dress suited for an afternoon tea. What I'm wearing right now is what was called a wrapper. 
They were normally used as a house dress or as a dressing gown. And then she was ready to go about her chores. Put you on some pretty little lace cuffs. Nearly all of their collars were removable. This is a hoop. And there you have another look. Then you can put you on a little waist center. You had to have your bonnet in your gloves. And then you were ready to go to town. You remove your bonnet. I certainly will not. I am under orders from General Butler uh, himself, and I insist you remove your bonnet. Beast Butler. Roebuck is my sweetheart's name, he's off to the wars and gone. He's fighting for his nanny dear, his sword is buckled on. He's fighting for his own true love, his fault he does defy. We could not present fashions of the Civil War era without mentioning the fashions of mourning, or as it was called, Globes, Widow's Weeds. There were specific rules to follow while in mourning, and there was quite a lot of mourning during the Civil War. The following her Widow's Weeds. To model another Widow's Weeds ensemble. Our dress is portraying. And now from somewhere out in no man's land, there was the steady moan of a wounded soldier. But finally, Captain Elitombre could stand it no longer as the moans grew so loud, he crawled on his stomach into no man's land and found the wounded soldier and drag, drug him back to their camp. They saw that the man had now passed away. But to the surprise, he was wearing a Confederate uniform and the captain drew his breath when he saw the face of his own son. Preparing to lure him in the grave, the bugler stepped forward and volunteered to play a few notes for the dead man. So the captain handed him a scrap of paper that he had taken from his son's pocket. It had a few notes on it. And so the bugler began to play. And when he played at that funeral, was what we today know as taps.